This is the new Toyota Camry Hybrid. Wait, 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 wait. Come back, come back, come back. This one is interesting, I promise. It's the first time the Camry range has been fully imported since 1987, and it's the first passenger sedan to use Toyota's new global architecture, which basically promises a focus on driver engagement and fun. It's also got a pretty cool new design. It's loaded with tech and safety features, and Toyota promises that above all else, it will be fun to drive. So let's take a closer look. Scheduled for an Australian launch in November, this all-new Camry will arrive with a choice between two petrol-powered engines or a hybrid version we've tested here and in two distinct body styles, safe or sporty. The first Camry range to be fully imported since 1987 is also the first sedan to be built on the company's new global architecture, which is the same platform that underpins the CHR small SUV. Inside, you'll find it's a fairly significant departure from the cars that are currently prowling Australian roads, and Toyota's made no bones about the fact that they want this Camry to compete in a more premium space, and this swirling interior that kind of looks like it's been architecturally designed is an example of that. Now on the tech front, we'll get a choice of seven or eight inch touchscreen, depending on the trim level, as well as a TFT screen here in the dash, but also very cool is a giant 10 inch head up display, which means there's plenty of space up there for more information beyond just the usual speedometer. The Camry is still officially a medium-sized sedan, but it is bigger than ever before. This new one is up to 46 millimeters longer than the current version and sits on a 50 millimeter longer wheelbase. And while they don't sound like massive gains, the result is a genuinely huge cabin, especially in the back seat where legroom is impressive, even behind tall front seat riders. Now it's technically a medium sedan, but having grown in almost every dimension, it's gotta be pushing those boundaries. And as a result, there's plenty of space back here. Now I'm five foot 10 and sitting behind my own driving position. And as you can see, there's miles between my knees and the seat in front, and there's plenty of headroom too. And all of that means you can genuinely put two adults back here in comfort. Now there's two cup holders up front, which join the two cup holders hidden in this pull down divider. And there's room in every door for bottles. There's also two ISOFIX attachment points, one in each window seat. Toyota's got high hopes for the hybrid, tipping it to become the best-selling option in Australia, helped along of course by government fleet sales. The 2.5 litre unit will produce 131 kilowatts and 221 newton metres, and is paired with a CVT automatic transmission. This new architecture is all about Toyota's recent push to build cars that sell on more than just good fuel efficiency and dependability. Or as one of the engineers told us this morning, to build cars that inject a little bit of emotion into the drive experience. Emotion in a Camry. But you know what? They've done exactly that. Is it the sportiest, most athletic offering? No. But it does make you feel connected to the road now in a way that it never has before. The camera is offered in two suspension settings, a normal tune, which is probably a bit too billowy and what we might call an American spec, and a sportier tune, which we're driving now, and is actually bang on in terms of striking that balance between supple and sportiness, while still soaking up road imperfections without too much bother. Now Toyota's yet to confirm exactly the configurations they'll be offering the Camry in when it arrives in November, but if it was our money, we'd be opting for that sportier tune, which is just right for everyday driving. The steering's nice and direct too, and while it has been moving around a little bit on these wet roads, it does feel pretty nimble through the twisty stuff, and kind of like a bigger version of the CHR, which we also thought felt pretty good. There's actually a surprising amount of punch from this little hybrid engine too. And while it will be joined by a bigger V6 engine when it lands in Australia, which at a glance seems more suited to Australian tastes, Toyota actually thinks this one will become the volume seller. Now it must be said, we've spent pretty limited time in these American spec pre-production cars, and it's been on a pretty wet and slippery day here in Portland. So the real test will come when we get this car on Australian roads in November, but so far so good. Toyota's in the process of ditching its well-worn cardigan of conservatism, and this new Camry is another example of that. Sure, it's gonna be hard to ditch its long-standing reputation as being a little bit vanilla, but those who do jump in the driver's seat of this new model might just be pleasantly surprised. For the full review, click here, and don't forget to subscribe to stay on top of all our latest videos.